Well, weather permitting tonight, Boeing will launch their first manned mission to the International Space Station at 10 o'clock Eastern. The Starliner will blast off from Cape Canaveral in Florida several years later than planned. There had been all manner of setbacks in the spacecraft's development, but NASA say they are confident it is now ready to go. Two of their most experienced astronauts will be on board, Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore. And if successful, the Boeing will become the second private firm able to transport crew to and from the space station alongside Elon Musk's SpaceX. Here's Palab Ghosh. Ready for launch. Right on top is Boeing's Starliner spacecraft, it's the latest private sector launch to the International Space Station. This is Starliner's first test flight with a crew. It's five metres high and four and a half metres wide. It can carry up to seven astronauts into low Earth orbit, but this time it will be carrying just two. During the mission, the crew will test the spacesuits and seats, assess the onboard life support and navigation systems, and evaluate the system that moves cargo to the International Space Station. If all goes to plan, Starliner will be certified for regular supply missions. And lift off. Its first uncrewed test flight in 2019 didn't make it to the space station because of a software fault. A second attempt in 2022 did make it, but there were issues with some of the thrusters and the craft's cooling system. And on Earth, Boeing has been facing growing scrutiny because of faults with some of its aircraft. This is the big one. This is the first test flight with humans on board. They've had a few problems on earlier test flights, I think it's fair to say. So um, there's a lot riding on this one. The astronauts, in their new blue lightweight suits, have reassured those close to them that the faults have been fixed and the spacecraft is safe to fly. We're here because we're all ready. And it, you know, our families and friends have heard about it along the way. You know, we've talked about all these, the, the issues that we've encountered. And um, I think they're happy and proud that we've been part of the process to fix it all. The astronauts will dock 24 hours after liftoff and return after 10 days. They'll experience Starliner's landing system, which will touch down on land in the deserts of the southwestern United States. Palab Ghosh. BBC News. Well, let's speak to Dr Jennifer Millard, astronomer at Fifth Star Labs. Hello, welcome to you. Um, look, finding faults in test flights is what it's all about, but surely this went beyond the norm, didn't it? So there were probably more issues than they would have liked. However, as you said, these are test flights, you know, the previous uncrewed ones, and of course this one being a crewed test flight. We do expect problems to come up. But even though there were numerous ones, none of them, especially on the second uh, uncrewed test flight, were catastrophic. So had astronauts been on board, they would have been safe because although the cooling system was a little bit over enthusiastic, they think that that's probably because there weren't any astronauts on board. So there wasn't any body heat coming off them and it kind of fooled the system a little bit. But they wouldn't although put Butch and Sonny on it unless they <laughs> thought those had been ironed out, would they? Exactly. Although we do take risks when it comes to space flight and development, as soon as astronauts are involved, they don't do those risks. They will not put an astronaut on board a capsule and yes, unless they are absolutely confident that those astronauts are going to come back safely. So what are we going to see tonight? How, how does this work and how different is it to the rocket and the capsule we're familiar with now from the SpaceX programme? So this rocket, it's the first time this rocket's actually going to be launching astronauts, which is very fun. So we're not going to see the kind of boosters flying back like we see with the SpaceX rocket. But it'll be similar in the sense of, you know, we'll see the rocket go up. It'll take several minutes to get up into orbit. And then, yeah, about a day until they actually dock with the International Space Station. We're watching the animation as it as it goes up. This is from the Boeing company. What does it mean for NASA to have two commercial competitors ready and able to taxi people to the space station? I think there's two points really. First of all, we've got some redundancy and then of course there's the money factor. So with the redundancy, if something is to go wrong with the Dragon capsule from SpaceX, it has to be grounded for whatever reason. Then as long as this goes well, this test flight and Boeing gets certified, then there is a second option. So there's backup. And then when it comes to money, well, if you haven't got a monopoly, so if SpaceX now loses this monopoly, they can't be charging whatever they like because Boeing can come in and undercut them and then SpaceX can undercut them. And so 
hopefully prices will come down. And of course, whenever we're going into space, it's taxpayers' money, right? So the better value for money that we can get, everyone wins, really. But the the role of the private sector is growing now all the time. Are we are we in a new era of human exploration? We are certainly. It's absolutely a new paradigm for space exploration when it comes to people. NASA are purposely transferring kind of low Earth orbit activities onto the commercial sector in order to free up their time and also their funds as well. These companies have been given a finite budget to develop these capsules and then any extra money, well, that's got to come from Boeing, it's got to come from SpaceX. So it kind of constrains NASA's budgets. It also means that they can focus on other technologies and kind of deep space exploration. So they can focus on the deep scientific technologies needed to get us to put people back on the moon, for example, also then eventually get us to Mars and all of the wonderful deep space telescopes that we're developing, like the recently launched James Webb Space Telescope, all of that kind of activity. And if it goes well tonight, um, three o'clock Eastern, if you want to set your alarms for when it blasts off, um, then what? I mean, how, how will Boeing step up the programme from that point onwards? So the certification process will take a number of months because they're going to have to make sure that all of the tests are completed successfully. So these astronauts, you know, they're not going to be lazing about on this journey. They're going to be really putting this capsule through its paces, you know, making it forget where it is, putting it on an incorrect orbit to see if it can fix itself and see how the manual controls work. They'll be testing evacuation procedures. All of those have to be verified. Yeah. So then the first cruise missions we're looking at spring sometime next year and then it'll be regular jaunts up there for cargo and for crew right someone's just whispered in my ear that it's uh, three uk time 10 eastern uh, so reset your alarms to what i just told you a few minutes ago um thank you very much uh, for coming on the program jennifer will you be watching it i'm gonna set an alarm and as long as it stays on, on track... Tell me what know, it's like. I won't be. Weather, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm happens. on duty tomorrow. I'll, I'll, maybe we'll speak later about what it was like. Uh, Dr Jennifer Millard, thank you for coming on the programme.